In this video, we'll discuss how to create and implement a quiz for your Socrative session. We are currently at the launch page, which means we would launch anything that we have prepared. So to create a quiz, I would want to go to quizzes. And here I have several options. I can create a quiz from scratch using the Socrative session template, or I could import a quiz. I'll quickly show this option to you and we'll come back to create a quiz. So to import a quiz, I would tap here and it would have to be in an Excel file. Now, a lot of people will say, well, I have no idea what to do. If we look right here, it says download the Excel template here. I would tap here. And once it was ready, I could, if I didn't have internet access maybe over the weekend, but I wanted to create a quiz for Socrative, I could go in here and create the question and get my quiz completely ready. So then when I came in on Monday, I could upload and put the quiz into Socrative. So it's as easy as downloading that template, saving it to whatever you want to call it, and then importing the quiz. So we could put true, false, Let's do multiple choice. Here we go. And what color is this on a sunny day? So I'm going to put brown. Ooh. So then I'm going to put over here the correct answer is B. And if you have multiple correct answers, you would put them in the column here. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, and we'll do a demonstration um, of importing. So I'll go ahead and give it a different name by choosing Save As, and I'm going to say Socrative Demo Quiz. And we'll save it. And now I'm going to go back and import my quiz by clicking on Choose File. And I'm going to bring it up here and see what happens. So it says my quiz was imported successfully. So I'm going to go back to Quizzes and see if it is there under My Quizzes. It looks like it is still loading and sometimes it does take a bit to actually get it in there and that's okay. So I usually just spend some time and let it process. Now, there was another option here under import quiz and it said enter the SOC number of another quiz. So if you are teaching fourth grade with another teacher and you've created a Socrative that you would like to share, if I go back to my quizzes, I could then open it up. I'm going to go ahead and do edit so that I can see it. And the SOC number is right here. So I would want to grab this number. I'm going to go ahead and do a right click and copy it. And head back to quizzes and I'm going to tap import quiz and paste that SOC number in and say import. And so now I have that in my quizzes. So I could share or grab a quiz from anyone by using this method as well. So let's head back to quizzes and look at how to just create a quiz inside Socrative. So I would tap on create quiz and give it a name. And one option that you have is to align an entire quiz to a standard. I usually don't use this option just because I'm trying to get some things done. I do believe that um, it works quite effectively. I've had a couple of social studies teachers use it quite successfully. So once I've titled it, I'm going to start my first question. What I can do is add images. So if I tap here and click on the picture, if I have downloaded an image, I can actually place it inside of my quiz. So this is just a silly image, not a serious one, just so that you can see. So if you have maybe a math problem you would like to put in there, 
or you have a diagram or some kind of graphic they need to analyze to answer the question, you may place it there. Then you also have to add a question. You can't just put an image there. I know these are silly questions, but uh, they'll get us by for right now. So once I've typed in my answers, I would then go over to this correct area and put a box on the correct answer. Now you're probably asking, can I have more than one answer? Absolutely. You can have as many as you need and you can even add answers if need be. So I'm going to just put it at orange and I'm going to add a question. And of course this would be false. So I'm going to tap on false because that is the answer. And now I'm going to add a short answer so you can see how that one works. So then students would have to provide, but you then can ask, um, you can actually offer correct answers in here. They say it's optional because I, we've had issues in the past with people who've used this. If the student does not type in exactly what you want, it will be counted wrong. So I would go ahead and not worry about using that one. In an explanation, you could provide feedback to them after they answer the question. So when I am done, I'm going to go ahead and tap on save. And it looks like my quiz is ready to go. And then I'll scroll up to the top right and tap on save and exit. And so now my quiz is actually ready to launch. So I'm going to go ahead and choose skyline. And now, I can make some decisions here. This could be student paced and giving them immediate feedback, which means they see their grade at the end. This would be great for an in-class assessment of any kind, whether it be a quiz or a summative assessment at some point. Then I could have student paced. <clears throat> they navigate the questions their own way, but once they get to the end, uh, you get to monitor their progress um, and kind of see live results tables. I more or less prefer the student feedback um, so that it's just done and you really don't have to worry about it. To me, there's the student paste or there's the teacher paste. This one really hasn't made or break um, anyone with what they were doing. So I'm going to go ahead and go with teacher paste this time. And then I have some options. I can disable names, which I'm not going to do. I want to see the names and know who it is. Here's something that I know a lot of us would like. You can randomize the answer order. So if they're sitting by each other and someone looks over, they go, oh, that kid answered B, they'll copy. You can do this, and now the copying isn't so much of an issue. I can hide question feedback if it's there. I didn't put any, so I'm not going to worry about that. You could also hide the final score from them. I'm not so sure I'd want that either. So I'm going to go ahead and say this looks good and tap on Start. And here is the question. <clears throat> So now I'm going to go in as a student and get started. So here's my first question. What color is the background of this one? So I'm going to give my answer and say submit. And it gives me immediate feedback. So now I know what needs to be done. And so now I'm waiting for the teacher to give me another answer. And so I can tap on next. So then it tells me incorrect. Next. And then the student has their answers that they need to provide. As you can see, you're probably not always going to um, want to do teacher paste but it is effective. So let's go ahead and download our results. 
And I'm going to go to quizzes again and just show you really quickly what it would look like if it was student paste. So I'm going to do student paste, hit start. And now I can quickly see what is going on as they answer. So I'm going to go ahead and go out here. Done. And now as a student, I can go as fast as I want through this assessment. I do not have to wait for the teacher to get me through. So if you had a 50 question assessment through this tool, you could allow the teachers to the students to go at their own pace. So that's basically how a quiz would work.